A couple of days ago, I asked myself this question. If I wanted a crispy fried chicken sandwich that tastes great, but is done in the least amount of time possible, with ingredients I always have in the fridge or pantry, and with simple cleanup, how would I do it? Well, I'll tell you in this video because this chicken sandwich took me just 20 minutes to make. Hey everyone, I'm Ethan, a home cooking nerd who likes to find better ways to cook and share them with all of you. So I love cooking and have no problem spending hours upon hours in the kitchen. But outside of researching, filming, and editing these videos, probably about 80 to 90% of my cooking is actually just very quick things that are done in maybe 15 to 20 minutes. So what we're gonna do in this video is go over the method for the fastest fried chicken sandwich that I know how to make, and then we'll meet you back here for the taste test. To start, place two boneless skinless chicken thighs into a bowl and add 113 grams or a half cup of milk, five grams of salt, and a little splash of vinegar. Then just roughly mix this to combine, and the milk is what is going to help our flour dredge stick to the chicken. It's not quite as good as thicker buttermilk, but I never happen to have buttermilk in my fridge, so regular milk works perfectly fine. Meanwhile, at the stove, set a wok over medium heat and add enough peanut oil to fry the chicken, probably about an inch or two. This first container of oil is what I saved from the last couple of times I fried, then I just topped it up with a little bit more from my other container. I'll show you guys how I save my fry oil later. While that's heating up, add 50 grams of flour and 25 grams of cornstarch to a bowl to combine. The cornstarch is pure starch, which will help absorb moisture without forming gluten-like flour, so our chicken will get crispier. Now, cornstarch is something I always have in my pantry, but if you don't have it, plain flour works just fine too. Again, make this as simple as possible for you. For my spices, I added 20 cranks of black pepper, some smoked paprika, chili powder, garlic powder, oregano, and another little pinch of salt. Then take the milk chicken and pour a little bit of it into the dredge and mix it in. This is going to create nice clumps that get fried and crisp when they stick to our chicken. Then you can move the chicken pieces to the flour mixture and coat it until completely combined. You really want to press the flour into the chicken so that layer really sticks on there. And you can see we get all these nice little craggly bits that are going to fry up perfectly in the oil. Do the same with the other piece and now we fry. At the stove, verify the temperature of the oil is 375 degrees Fahrenheit, and using a thermometer here is pretty critical for making frying as easy as possible. Slowly drop the chicken thigh into the oil to let it get nice and golden brown. Now, while the magic of frying goes on, you can wash your milk bowl, the excess dredge, and you can wipe down your work surfaces and also gather all your sandwich accoutrements. Always be cleaning and preparing as you go. In total, you want to fry the chicken for about eight or so minutes and then flip it once or twice until it gets evenly golden brown. I like to pull my chicken when it reaches 155 degrees Fahrenheit and then I move it to a paper towel over a wire rack, dab off a little bit of that excess oil and then move it to the wire portion so it doesn't get soggy while we're waiting. While that cools for a minute or two, I grab my bun and the sandwich accoutrements, and I did make a quick sauce for this one, which was two parts mustard, two parts mayo, and one part hot sauce, but feel free to use whatever you got. To assemble the sandwich, I start with some sauce on the bottom bun, followed by the forever vibrant pickled onions, a little bit of romaine lettuce, the fried chicken, a little bit more sauce, and then finally our top bun. And just look at this beauty of a fried chicken sandwich. Now before we eat, very, very important, don't waste your peanut oil that you use to fry. Just let it completely cool in the wok, then whenever you come back to it, set a paper towel over a strainer and pour the oil back in and let it drip down into that container, place it over top, and there we go, set it back in your cabinet and you are ready for frying next time. Okay, it's time to eat my friends. All right everybody, and that is how to make the fastest fried chicken sandwich, at least that I know of. If someone can do it faster, let me know. But in total, I actually started a timer when I started filming and it took me 29 minutes. Now, 29 minutes is way overestimated for how long this will probably take you because I was moving around cameras, I was making sure I had good shots, I had to adjust focus and stuff like that. So this shouldn't take any more than probably 20 minutes, I would say. I mean, all you have to do is get the heat up and then it takes like eight minutes to cook. So it's really, really fast, but let's give this a taste test. Oh 
unbelievable. Are you guys hearing that crunch? It's, it's nice and crunchy, but it's not like hard crunchy. Like listen to this little piece. It's just an unbelievable sandwich for like 20 minutes of work. Like for example, I couldn't even go to Chick-fil-A and get this in like 25, 20 minutes. By the time I get in my car, go there, order, probably have to sit in line for at least a couple orders. It, and then theirs isn't even as fresh as this. So like, there's no reason not to make it, especially since everything I already have, like this is all stuff that I have in my pantry or in my fridge basically at all times. And then as far as cleanup goes, we already touched all this stuff. All we have to do is let that dry and put it away. I've got these two things that are just gonna go in the fridge. And then the last big thing is, is the, the oil, which as I said, is literally all you have to do is just let it cool down, throw it over top of a strainer with a paper towel, you're good to go. I reuse my oil all the time. For example, I bought this gallon of peanut oil three months ago, and I think it was like 15 bucks. Look how much I have left. And like, I'm gonna have a bunch of oil left over from that. And this is oil that I actually use as my daily oil. I use olive oil and this oil. I've spent a lot much more on olive oil than I spent on peanut oil in the past three months, I can tell you that. So for me, deep frying is a great cooking technique to have in your back pocket when you want something delicious and it will come together very fast. It's just a, a super great technique for me. Like I said, it doesn't have to be hard. You don't have to do overnight brines. You don't have to do dry, wet, dry. You don't have to do buttermilk. You don't have to go for the store for any special ingredients. Just focus on the base techniques and you'll have something delicious. So that's gonna wrap it up for this video. If you guys want the recipe, it'll be up on my website and linked down below, but I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace. So much better than like Chick-fil-A or anything. Dude, the crispiness, ooh.